Dearly beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, praise his holy name. We appreciate God for this Father that has brought us. And so let us pray, Father God in heaven, we appreciate you, for you are so good. Thank you for every opportunity. Thank you for your word, which is light, light to our feet, and it leads us all through. We pray the Lord you bless us this moment in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we thank God for every chance, for every opportunity that he gives us to interact with his word. God is good, and it is all the time, whether at night or during the day, whether the times are good or whether the times are bad, God is good. And so we continue with our interaction with the word of God and the choices that we have made is looking at what the Bible people have been able to do. And these Bible people lived at that time and the writers put down these notes so that actually can be able to read and yet analyze the lifestyles that these people went through. Because as they were, and so we are, human as they were, human we are. And God desires that we get closer to him because we are his image here on earth. And since we are his image, we are meant to live a life that is pleasing to him. And so the Bible person that we're going to look at now is the bearer of the book called Ruth. Ruth, one of the biblical characters that has impacted many over years. And during our time, Ruth also impacts us. And the story is told in a book called Ruth. And this book is in our scriptures. And now that we are talking about Ruth, we talk about the person whose name appears here. Several things that were done, several things that were said, several things that were acted out, and they are written about her. But before we talk about Ruth, let me get with you to the book itself in the Old Testament Bible. And this is Ruth, chapter 1. And I desire that we we'll read a few verses and then we shall derive our lessons. And the reason why in these episodes of Finding God, we read there and then we look at, we digest, we meditate to pick some lessons that will enable us move our life, move our days, just like these people did. And so Ruth, in chapter 1, the Bible says that in the days when the judges ruled there was a famine. There was a famine in the land, and the man of Bethlehem in Judah went to Sajon in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. And so in this verse 1, the Bible gives us the characters that uh, we are going to talk about here. One is this Bethlehemite man who left with his wife, the wife is going to be named, and his two sons. And so the Bible says that the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephraimites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into a country of Moab and remained there. Remember, they are moving away from their home country because the reason is given. The reason is there was calamity that befell them in their home country, and the calamity that befell them was famine. And so they moved. And of course, we are living in times when these things are common, when famine drives people away from their home countries, when wars drive people away from their home countries and many things and natural calamities like um, landslides, like floods, and so all this. And so these people were driven out of their country. And so, in verse 3, But El Melech, the husband of Naomi, when they were there, the man died. And she was left with her two sons. This, is, this was another calamity. They are running away from one calamity 
they ran to Moab. Now, when they reached there, the man Elimelech died, and Naomi remains with her two sons. Now, in verse 4, these two, these two Moabite women, we mean Elimelech's sons, Naomi's sons, took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Opa, and the name of the other was Ruth. And Ruth is the one that actually bears the, the, the title, the name of the book. And so they lived there for about 10 years. That was recommended. That was time. It was 10 years. It was quite some time. But listen, both Malon and Chilion died. These are the two sons that Naomi had remained with. They died so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. This was another tragedy, a big one. Then Naomi arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab. And for she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. Now, what makes them want to go back home? Because God had visited his people and there was now food back home in Bethlehem. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters in the law. And they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi, but Naomi said to her two daughters in law, go return now you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. Because actually, Naomi's husband had died. And he had two sons had also died. But these two daughters had clung onto her, had remained an encouragement to her. And so she blesses them. Go. Now for me, I'm returning back. I'm going back to Bethlehem. But now you also go back to your mothers, to your parents. And they wept. There was, you know, separation now here. And in verse 10, this is what they told her. No, we will, we will return with you to your people. They committed themselves. But Naomi said, turn back, my daughters. Go back. I have no sons to marry you. Because there was widow inheritance in the land there. Turn back, my daughters, go. So he pleaded with them. Then one of them, Opa, gave way and she went back. And that was after crying and times had been so bad. And they had been so friends. And this is made, made life so hard for them. But one of them gave way and she went back. And that was Opa. Now, in verse 15, the woman that we're talking about, that is Ruth. The Bible says, See, Naomi tells, tells her, Your sister-in-law has gone to her people. Go, go, also go to your gods. Return to your parents. But Ruth, verse 16, said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from, turn away from you, from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I also be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more so also if anything but death puts me apart from you. Beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, this story, when you read it, by the way, this book is very, very brief. It has only four chapters. And when you read it, it has many things that actually it will state to you. But I've just captured a little that actually this woman, Ruth, a Moabite. But of course, actually Moab had a story that was behind it. The people of Moab um, were descendants of um, these, uh, the, the two daughters of um, of Lot, that one you know now, but here they are the Bethlehemite, Elimelech with his wife Naomi, 
because of famine, they go to Moab, the land that was neighboring because there was food there. But calamity again struck them there. And so this book of Ruth, why I'm talking about it in the Finding God series, and why it comes at, this, at such a time like this, it brings us two things in these women that had remained alone, encouragement and hope to those who decide to follow God. Now this woman, a Moabite, Ruth, a Moabite, not an Israelite, of course, and here she decides to cling on something that uh, would eventually benefit her. And so friends, this message comes to show us what we can do. Of course, calamity has struck, trouble has come, challenges have come our way. But Ruth decides to commit herself to her husband's people. And she decides to commit herself to, mother, to her mother-in-law. And so, because of the decision that she took, I took interest to read about her in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 1. When they talk about the lineage of Jesus Christ, listen to me, this woman is also mentioned, Ruth. And of course, that was God's own making. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 5, you find it there. So the book of Ruth is about, you know, this hope and encouragement. It's about love and loyalty uh, that we are able to wave through hurtful times. Their times are not any different from our times. And um, since he talks about hope and encouragement, and here we are, and we stand as church leaders, we stand as Christian brethren to encourage one another. And encouraging one another not through our own words alone, because our words can help people, but also point to scripture. Like when we are like we are pointing at these scriptures in the book of Ruth, talking about Naomi, talking about Opa, talking about Ruth, these widowed women. And during our time we also have many people that are widowed. And so we need to encourage ourselves as we read this. And so an unfolding story helps us to find our level during difficult times. What do we do when it is actually difficult times? Now, do we give up? What do we do? Do we get devastated? Yes, humanly speaking, we get devastated. These women got devastated. Can you imagine? Naomi's husband dies. She remains with her two sons. The two sons die and they remain only women. And the society in which they were living, a male relative, meant a lot. Now all of them are gone. All their hope is gone. And so, friends, I find that God works in mysterious ways. He has always done it and he always do it. And he's a good timer. Events unfold. Bad events unfold. Ugly events unfold in our lives. Ruth the lady and the Naomi, of course, but Ruth points us to what we need to do when times are not well. Now, a few things that actually that I want to add, as we read about Ruth, the woman of conviction. The point that I'm making here is Ruth exhibited deep convictions that she stays with Naomi. Whatever the circumstances, the reason why she makes the commitment in verses 16 and 17. And remember, she followed the convictions of her heart, and they were right convictions. Because right is right. Right is right. And sometimes we give up. When we start something, we give up. But Ruth shows us that something that was right, she remained convicted to it, and so she benefited from her, you know, standing firm in circumstances that could make her waver. And so take note, my brother, take note, my sister, take note, everyone. I take note myself that convictions are part of life. And Ruth gives me the story that when she decided to stick, she stuck there. And of course, you know, one of the 
basic basic uh, scriptures that we read at weddings people choose this text sticking to one another and Ruth gives it you know point blank really that where you die I will die your people shall be my people your God shall be my God where you lodge I will lodge and of course actually it speaks multitudes that when people quote this at their wedding day when people quote this when they're exchanging rings husband and wife it's actually a lifelong commitment because when someone says where you die i will die where i sleep i will sleep where you go i will go and this is really magnetic a statement that actually was made by this moabite woman and may god who enabled Ruth to say these words, enable you. And may it, this portion speak to relationships, conviction, husband, wife, well, and even our other relationships that we have in communities that we shall remain uh, closer and knit together. Now, one other thing that actually that we pick from this woman is that truly, like we've seen before we see it again, that no one is beyond God is rich. You see, Circumstances can come and then you think, okay, maybe I'm fully forgotten. God does not forget his people. And this is spoken over and over again in the scriptures that no one can be outside God is uh, saving care. I call it saving care because there is care but saving. Ruth stands out. And of course, actually, I've read about several people that God has picked from nowhere to somewhere. And Ruth is another one. And so it keeps encouraging me. And may it encourage somebody there that God is loving care. Nobody can be outside it. As long as your convictions, you, you make a step. Ruth did. She took a step. Of course, I could have talked about people uh, that we could, could unimagine that actually they are. You remember the woman, Rahab? The prostitute, yes, we, I mean, we have talked about those people there. Nobody could imagine, but of course, but because of what she did, the step that she took, and she's also mentioned in the scripture. Now, little people like David, whom nobody could think that well would be a savior of the nation of Israel. And so, friends, for me, in all these things, when I read these scriptures, it's just an encouragement and hope, like we have seen, that we have seen, in this entire book, when you said at the beginning that it's about encouragement and hope. And what more can we talk about in generations in times like this? Of course, talk about repentance, talk about forgiveness. Those are the topics now. But one of them is this of encouragement and what? And hope. So actually we cannot live hopelessly there. But that we can encourage one another to keep moving on, to keep sojourning like we read in scripture, these women sojourned and things like that. So all of us fall into the loving and caring hands of God and Ruth was like she purposed and she remained in the loving hands of God. Now Ruth's story now teaches us that pain, we find pain in our life. Pains come. But my brother, my sister, let not pain drive you away from trusting God. Pain is one of the serious things that can cause someone to waver in their faith. Wavering is to, you know, should I continue, should I not? But Ruth gives us a very, very encouraging message that even when things are so hard, she remained clinging on, sojourning on, sojourning on. And so may God, who enabled Ruth, enable you. May God who enabled Ruth enable me that actually even when there is pain, which is actually the order of the day in our times as well, that we shall remain clinging on to the truth, the truth that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. So friends, God is faithful. In Ruth we find that God is mighty. In Ruth we find that actually God's timing is the best because we shall find at a time when we're talking about the other people like Naomi and like Boaz, God is timing is the best. And indeed, Ruth never regretted her decision that she made to cling to her mother in law. And of course, 
it also shows us something very important our relations that occur between the mothers mothers in law and their daughters now this was a daughter in the law they had no child by the way they had there was nothing big to show that actually ruth should remain in this family but ruth knew ruth was divinely led to stick to naomi and so this is very very important that actually god enables people to remain you know faithful to remain you know um the words that we speak should not just fall down but the words that we speak should be able to um we, we, we watch them we wait for for the for their fulfillment so as is elsewhere god can use anyone this is one important other thing, important, important thing that actually you see ruth's convictions god used her so god can use little things god can use nobodies god can use the unlikely growth comes into picture into the lineage of jesus christ i mentioned that earlier and who knew and many of us have a story to tell and you and i be encouraged ruth brings us a message here and her times were tumultuous difficult times our times are like the same way and so friends Ruth made a decision that impacted generations. This is very, very important. The decision that you may be taking today, you may think like it's a little decision, but it might impact generations. Parents, the decision that you take might impact your, impact your children and your children's 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 children. Now, Ruth, her generations next was actually, he left a legacy. What you decide today can impact you, can impact generations to come. Ruth made the right decision. Her decision to stay with Naomi, praise the Lord. She's the one that we've talked about here. Now, but Opa, remember the other one. When she decided to get away, she went, and that was the end of her story. There are certain times when these things happen like this, and the decision that we make, impactful decisions led by God. I pray for you at your work. I pray for you in your family. I pray for you as in your life that God will enable you that the decision that you make will be impactful, that your children may enjoy the good that because you made a decision. That, and of course, actually we have our grandparents, we have our parents, I mean, there are people that have fallen into the blessings of their parents because they were strategic, because they were purposeful, because they made decisions that they knew were God-led. And so there are some riches that we inherit. The vehicles that we drive sometimes, you know, the houses that we sleep in, the impactful decisions that our parents and our grandparents, the property that they acquired and acquired rightly, it's the point that I'm making here. So you impact the generations that are to come. And so, friends, may God, who enabled the Ruth, enable you. And also to remember that the past is not your future. The past is the past, the future is the future. Now, Ruth did stay in the past, but Ruth was focusing on her future. And may you pursue your future from now on like Ruth pursued her future and so this entire book gives us line upon line that actually scripture upon scripture that ruth purposed to face her future now young man whoever you are or woman or whoever they are or old people whatever they are all of us in our various capacities the future remains in the future and the past remains in the past so may god impact us may god enable us to move forward. Now Ruth did move. He, she moved and she, her decisions were made and she has impacted us today. And so friends, stick to what the Bible says. Keep your commitment. Ruth did. She kept her commitment. Now, and she was a hardworking woman. You read on. In the following chapters, she worked so hard in the Garden of Boaz. And because of what she did, she fell into the hands of uh, the provider. So friends, 
even when others leave, even when others give up purpose that you never gave up, Ruth gives us a message. And I want to appreciate God that this message has stood generations and generations, you know, thousands and thousands of years. It speaks to me, it speaks to you. So if you were about to give up on your convictions, and if they are God-led, pain should not drive you away. Ruth knows it all. Naomi knows it all. These women know, know it all. Now, you and I have to take our leaf, have to take our lessons, and pick something that actually will impact our generations. Let's work. Let's, be, let's use our convictions, our present times, whether painful, whether hurtful, that actually something good for the future will be standing. So friends, I want to thank God for you. I want to thank God for these scriptures that we read that are so impactful in our life and so that we can find our way. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>